Hello folks, welcome to another recording of No Man's Sky with Alon Paul. So we're doing something a little different. I had a friend of mine mention to me that he hadn't played No Man's Sky in about four or five years. He finally got back into it and he is absolutely and completely lost. And he says that one thing he would really like to see would be some sort of video that not just steps you through certain things, but explains in detail the many different things you see in the menu systems. Not just how to start a game. We can all start a game. No big deal there. But something that will walk him through exactly what he's looking at, how he should set things up, something along those lines. So for all intents and purposes, what we're going to do is start the game. Now, I'm running this on a PC. Let's go back to the screen here. I'm running this on a PC. So everything I'm going to do is going to relate to what buttons you're going to press on a PC. Um, I, yes, I do have an Xbox controller here I could plug in and actually use. I know a lot of people do that. And obviously you can play on PlayStation, Xbox. Uh, you can do it on Nintendo Switch now. But I'll be doing this on PC. So main starter screen that comes up, we obviously have multiplayer. And we have just playing the game. It's self-explanatory, I would hope. But what we're going to do is go to play game. And... I'm going to choose, as in most cases, you'll have no data in here if you're starting the game for the first time. And you're going to do a new game. Now, in this case, on my mouse, that's the left mouse button that I'm pressing and holding in order to access what's being done here. Now, we always advise anybody who is first playing No Man's Sky to please go to normal mode. Start the game that way. You can do a relaxed mode if you wish. And as it says, it's a streamlined experience, it's got fewer systems to manage, and lower costs. You're not getting the full run-through of what it's like to play No Man's Sky. So we recommend going to normal mode. You're going to get all the usual settings, all the niceties of this. There's a creative mode. So once you get used to the game, you can go here and do some experimentation. You can just do some base building and have some fun. Perfectly fine to do that. Every now and then they come up with a community expedition. Now this year they had four expeditions as they did last year. And right now what they're doing is they're doing what's called a redux or a rerun of the expeditions in two week increments. Right now we're in expedition five. If you'd like to see how that's played, several YouTubers have done videos on this. Uh, I also have done some videos on the, ex uh, the whole Excel biology expedition number five. So feel free to go ahead and go through that. Um, but Again, if you're new to the game, you probably want to wait, try at least the normal mode, get acclimated to it. This whole thing will take you a few hours to go through. Um, even with my own slow-paced style of playing it, because I like to get a little distracted and uh, enjoy the actual experience, it can take you five, six hours of gameplay to get through the whole thing. And it's really enjoyable to do so. I do agree with some of the others saying that it's not my favorite expedition, but still fun. You can do a custom run any way you want to do it, which can include a permadeath, as it says here, gentle to permadeath, but you have total control over all the settings here. I'm not going to go into that just yet. And then finally, you have your survival mode, which is a slightly harder version of the normal mode. Got more hazards, as it says, smaller inventory, increased costs. Now, if I go to do normal mode, if I just press and hold my button down and choose that, it's going to start a game that's going to have the following settings. And I'm going to show you what they are in custom. So as you can see right now with normal settings, you have survival settings to start with. The survival elements, none, health only, hazards and health, and then the full support of everything. It does explain everything to you on the right hand side. But basically, the, in a nutshell, what it's trying to say is that you can either have no survival elements, nothing will affect you. Okay? As far as you're going to come across planets that are going to have toxic levels of radiation, um, higher levels of poison in the atmosphere, things like that, that will affect you. And how it affects you is dependent upon how you want to run it. Even in normal mode, it's set to full. But you can drop it down to hazards and health, or just health only. So in the full setting, you're getting everything, including um, the elements of the actual planet itself that you're on. Survival difficulty, standard. You only have three settings here in survival difficulty. Um, if you, you do a relaxed setting, there's a lot less you have to worry about. Whereas in standard mode, which is what normal mode is in, 
it's just you you have your normal things that you would encounter throughout the whole game whether it be animals or things like that that's how that runs and then finally challenging obviously this is going to be the most challenging setting the, the hardest difficulty if you will as far as how to survive and that is based on the next setting which is your natural resources you can have a whole lot of them scattered around very close by standard which means they're a little harder to come by or scarce which means you really gotta look for this stuff in order to get by what are these natural resources we're not going to get into that just yet but to put it simply these are elements that you'll find it could be plants it could be animals it could be um, resources such as rocks and minerals and things like that think of the periodic table of elements that's all I'm going to say to that we'll come back to this later in a later video most likely we'll show you what we're talking about sprinting you have the ability to sprint on your character now in no man's sky when you're running around you're using your usual WASD keys in order to get around but in order to sprint you're gonna hold you're gonna just usually tap or press and hold the sh left shift button at the same time so you're running faster uh, you'll jump with the spacebar so uh, jump when I say jump I really mean you're using your jetpack but we'll get to that in just a little bit so that's what sprinting has to do when you're sprinting in standard mode you have an actual sprint meter which drops and as you get further into the game you can add things onto your suit that you're wearing that will allow you to take longer times of running uh, or sprinting as the case may be so that's the way that's set if you drop it down to relaxed obviously it's going to remove the life support cost as it says here on the right hand side but it will still take short breaks in order to recharge whereas if you go infinite it has no effect on anything and you can just keep running and running and running without any effect whatsoever scanner recharge you are given a tool in no man's sky that your character carries and on that tool is a scanner that allows you to scan the elements around you scan things scan animals scan plants even look at the planet itself to determine what its main resources are uh, and that is activated by pressing and holding the F button on your keyboard now the scanner when it's when it's running properly in standard mode um, uh, it basically will allow you to not only look at these things but if you hit the C button on your keyboard it actually does a brief almost like a pulse across the ground it almost looks like a quick EMP pulse that that blasts out from you and then will actually light up nearby elements uh, things like oxygen carbon things that you're gonna use through the game that are very important elements and that scanner has to recharge now if you set it to challenging it takes a very long time for that challenge that scanner to recharge without upgrades standard it takes a little good, a good amount of time to recharge you can have a fast recharge and an obviously extremely fast recharge which allows it to almost recharge immediately damage levels has to do with many different things that you could uh, occur for instance uh, running and jumping off, off of a cliff you could get serious serious damage in the past it used to be if you set it to challenging or when you didn't have this setting and you were in permadeath mode a decent drop would kill your character and you'd have to start the game over again in it, right now it's it provides a lot of damage to you and can actually damage technology at the same time but we'll get to that in a moment of course standard damage is what you're set to so you'll take minimal damage your meter will drop a little bit it'll take a couple moments for it to recharge minimal means you get very little damage whatsoever and it takes a little bit to recharge finally none obviously technology damage means that and it used to be that you didn't get technology damage unless it was a special situation this is a new thing they've added to version 4 where actually if you do something kinda dumb you drop a long distance or you're attacked by an animal or a plant there's a possibility when it's set to minimal that you're that one of your pieces of technology on your suit or in your weapon that you're carrying your your, your handheld weapon could be damaged finally challenging means that there's a good chance it will get da damaged pretty much every time you do something dumb death consequences you can have it set to no item loss you just respawn immediately and you just keep on going now unlike other games you don't have an experience meter where you just gain more experience and you don't lose that experience there's no leveling up so you don't have to worry about that but still you can die in the game obviously if you set it to standard it just means that if you die you're gonna lose the items that were on you but if you find the point that which you died at you can pick up all the items there's usually a marker there you just select it 
you press your E button, it circles around and collects all the items back into your inventory again. In this case, items destroyed means you will lose a lot of items. It loses usually everything. You don't get anything back at all. So if you're carrying everything on your person and you run and you jump and you get killed, you lose all the items in your inventory completely. Finally, save deleted. This is what the old permadeath mode was. If you set it to this, that means if your char character dies, you lose the game. You cannot go back. So anything that you had set up, you had set up bases and you're really making great progress, the game is completely wiped from existence. That save is gone. You will have to start over again. So don't choose that unless you're not faint of heart. Crafting and item settings. Fuel usage. Now fuel usage has to do with your with your ship. Um, so uh, and it actually actually says up here, it says it also has to do with your mining laser as well as your starship's thrusters. So your fuel usage in those regards can be set to expensive, which means anytime you blast off from a planet or anytime you're um, using your mining laser, it eats up fuel real fast. Standard, obviously it's less discounted, which means you're going to get some, uh, it's going to take a while to, uh, to lose the charge on things. Finally, you can have no fuel usage whatsoever. Crafting. Standard, free, two choices, that's it. Either it's standard crafting and you can you have to acquire some things in order to craft them, or the crafting items have become free to you immediately. Um, now, if you look at the right-hand side, it talks about the building parts, items, and technologies that are normally assembled by crafting them from other gathered resources. If you set it to free, you won't have to collect those resources. You can build them immediately. Recipes and blueprints, again, if you have them learnable, that means you don't have a lot of them at the very beginning. You have to acquire them as you either go through the game, through the progress of the normal mode in the storyline, or you can get them from uh, technology that's been left behind on the planet that you're on or multiple planets that you, that you go to. You could acquire them in other ways, and we'll get to that at another time. Uh, purchases. There are certain things you will have to buy. There are three units of... Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. It actually brings it up over here what they are. But let's talk about credits first. Think of it like money. Your galactic trade network uses units. And these units are just like regular ordinary money in any game. You can acquire these units by selling things, by uh, scanning items that uh, will give you some money as well. Um, and then technologies that you want to acquire, like upgrades for your... Um, for your multi-tool that you're carrying, they cost something called nanites. Nanites are also acquired through general means of uh, finding technology on a planet and scanning that technology, and sometimes it'll give you nanites. Uh, my favorite way of getting nanites is discovering all the animals on a planet. By discovering all these animals, that will give you a bonus nanite upgrade. So you'll get anywhere between 250 nanites to sometimes even a, a few thousand depending upon how many animals you have to discover on the planet. But nanites are a secondary form of uh, monetary denomination on a, uh, in the game and is used for a lot of other transactions. Also very important piece that you need to have in this game. So units, something you can acquire easily. You can get a lot of units. You can get up to 4.2 billion units in your coffers, if you will. Nanites... I haven't reached the peak on those. I'm not even sure how high it goes. I've seen people with millions of nanites. Um, in all honesty, a couple hundred thousand nanites for yourself would make you a very rich person. There's a third uh, denomination called Quicksilver. And that is acquired by doing specific quests through a space station called the Anomaly. And those quests you can do once a day. And that's all you can do them for. If you don't do quests over a few days, you get a backlog of up to three. So you can do three of those quests in one day, and then it zeroes out, and you can't do them again until the following day. Um, and you get it in small increments. It could be anywhere between 900, uh, 1,200, 1,800 nanites at a time. Uh, pardon me, Quicksilver at a time. There are also entities in the universe that you may run across in your travels that will give you Quicksilver. But, again, a story for another time. So that has to do with your purchases. Goods availability. This has to do with what you can find on, the, say, the space stations or trade terminals and different places. 
and how much you can find in those uh, stations. Obviously, scarce, standard, abundant. You can find a lot of different things there, or you may have a hard time finding them at all. Inventory stack limits are set to standard on this one. That means you can go up to, and with most items, most of the regular items you can gather up, gather in your inventory, 9,999 9 of each one can be held in your inventory, just shy of 10,000, of course. If you put it to restricted, it drops it down to, I want to say 600, if I remember correctly. Um, I haven't done a restricted run in a long time. That's in survival mode. But in harsh, which is usually in permadeath, your inventory is limited to 300 of each item. So how does that affect you? Well, you use certain items and certain elements in the game. For instance, if you use carbon, carbon is used to charge your mining laser on your multi-tool that we were talking about earlier. By that multi-tool using up a lot of carbon real quick, when this is set to harsh, you can only hold 300 carbon. It usually takes about 100, 120, sometimes 150 carbon to recharge your multi-tool maximum. So you can see how that can become a problem. But carbon is also used in building a lot of different things too. Again, story for another time. Let's scroll down a little further. Now let's go into the bottom half of this, which is combat settings. Um, combat settings, what kind of combat can we expect? Combat settings are usually either with creatures on planets, but it's mostly to do with sentinels and then occasionally the armed pirates, which was one of our expeditions that came out this year. Expedition number six, if I believe, if I'm correct on that. This has to do with how strong they are. Are they weak, standard, challenging? Pretty simply put, you can figure that out. Um, your on-foot combat would have to do with... Um, the same kind of thing could be sentinels on the planet could be monstrosities these are a type of creature you could find that are pretty scary looking and other different things that you might find on a planet that could fight you space combat once again we're back to pirates this is mostly have to do with how often you're going to come across them um, and how quick they are to be antagonized if they're hostile pretty much you go into an area there's a good chance you're going to be running into system authorities and pirates very often creatures um, same thing. This has to do with being on a planet and those animals, whether they're going to be passive and none of them are going to do anything to you. They could be just defensive, though. so if you attack one by accident even, it could start attacking you or predators. And some planets can have predators. I've been to something called the Paradise Planet that was like, oh, this is a very pretty place. And the next thing I know, I'm getting chased by creatures that look like velociraptors. So that gives you a rough idea. Uh, don't be too scared. It's common. It's something that you can easily handle. I Trust me on that one. Finally, you go down to the ease of use area of your settings. Tutorial missions. When you first play this game, please leave that on. Go through the normal mode, leave the tutorial missions on, allow it to give you the gameplay. This will teach you everything you need to know about how to play the game. Um, but you can disable it, and a lot of us will disable it when we're doing like a permadeath, no starter ship challenge run called the Iron Man Challenge. Um, we'll turn that off so that we have access to a lot of things and we don't have to go through the story mode. Uh, makes it a little bit a little bit easier, but at the same time, it makes it easier for us to talk to you about what we're doing while we're playing the game. Inventory and transfer range nearby. What that means is that's talking about how close you are to, say, your um, spaceship or to your freighter. Um, don't talk about freighters right now. We'll get to that later. So... Nearby is how it's usually set. You have to be pretty close. Now, there are items you can add to your ship or to your freighter that allow you to um, transfer item to items to it over a much greater distance. In the case of freighters, sometimes very far away, even in a different system. Hyperdrive system access. Specialized. Now, let's we read through this. A hyperdrive obviously allows us to warp between star systems. We get that. Um, yellow star systems, just like our own sun. Well, no, it's not really our own sun, but yellow star systems may be reached freely. And other system classes require specialist drives to reach. This toggles whether the hyperdrive can warp to red, green, and blue star systems without the requirement for specialized warp technology. So if you leave it as specialized, you have to acquire the technologies in order to be able to go to those other systems. Otherwise, if you leave it unrestricted, you can go to any system you want without the required technology. Base power. When you set up a base, most bases, in order to turn certain things on in your base, require power. There are a couple different ways to do this. Again, we'll get into that later. But what it's asking here is if you wanted to have standard 
which goes by the usual rules of the of regulations of the game. You have to uh, get these particular, uh, particular pieces of technology and build them and then put them in your base or outside your base. Or will it be free? So if you set it to free, that means you don't have to build anything. As soon as you drop a base that requires power, instantly has power. Reputation and standing gain. Yes, there is reputations and standings in this game. Um, there are many creatures in this game. game. Uh, mostly there's the three main creatures, the Viking, the Corvax, and the Gek. You can build standing and reputation with each one of those main creature factions, if you will, uh, the other entities in the universe. There's also reputation and standing with the pirates, with merchants, with uh, traders, with uh, all kinds of other different uh, aspects of the game. Again, we'll get into that later as we show you in the space stations. Starting slots. What this means standard is that when you start the game, you get a ship that has very few slots in it. Um, you get your exosuit, which has very few slots in it. Now, you usually start with, say, I'm going to guess somewhere around 30 slots, I believe, in your exosuit. Some are divided between your technology and your standard cargo. Uh, and we'll show that later, exactly what we're talking about. You can have as many as 60 technology slots and 120 cargo slots just in your exosuit alone. 30 to, in comparison, 180. So you see that there's a lot of technology. If you go with the standard, you'll get your 30 slots and you'll have to acquire more slots as you go through the game. If you start maximum, obviously all your slots are opened up. I don't like to do that. That seems to be like almost like a little bit of a cheating thing to do. Finally, if you do this in custom mode and you change these settings, you can lock the difficulty settings. That's something a lot of us do when we're doing the uh, permadeath, no starter ship challenge mode I talked about, the Iron Man challenge. We will set all these to the maximum settings, the highest difficulties, and then lock it. So that way we can't come back to it later and change it. So this is your difficulty settings. And if you want to, you can actually go up here and change to permadeath. You see everything went to maximum, just about, but we always put everything else to maximum as well. Expensive, we'll go challenging. Uh, we'll definitely disable the tutorial and make the reputation stand challenging as well everything we go challenging on and then you have survival which puts everything up to highest settings in here but not everything as you can see and then finally relaxed it gives you all the lowest settings for the most part you could even go even further if you want to and drop them all down to the mat to the easiest settings in here but that just puts it into almost a creative mode and then here's creative mode so you can go creative as well as, as well if you want. Okay, so back to normal. So I'm going to get out of this, and we're going to go ahead and just go one step further. I know we've been going for about 20 minutes now describing that, but I want to go into some menus here real quick. So I'm just going to start a quick normal game, which uses those normal settings we were just looking at. And then you always get your startup screen. So the music fades out a little bit. You get your startup stars title screen that little bit of a reverb in the background very nice and we're going to wait here just a couple moments while it progresses through the different stars now by the way what you're looking at here is almost like the same thing you'll see on a galaxy map it's all the different star systems in this one galaxy there are many galaxies and no man's skies and the amount of planets is absolutely ridiculous um more planets than any human alive today could visit in a lifetime. But when you got millions upon millions of players playing, well, better chance we're going to find a lot more. So, and that's the best part about this game is the exploration portion of things. It's really just landing on a new planet and discovering new things. This looks very similar to the last planet. Oh, wait, it's got different creatures here. Very similar. Wait, it's not as quite as similar as the last planet. The sky's a little different color. The, the, the ground or the water is a different color. The plants look really weird here. The animals are strange. So begin insta uh, initial, initial installation. That's great. Begin initialization. So we're going to go with the E button on my keyboard. Hold it down. And it goes through some basic communication with you to let you know what you're up to. And then we're going to take a look at these life support systems here in a moment and the things that we're looking at. Shield kinetic systems, you have your own shield. 
and we're going to go over everything you're seeing on the screen here at one point. So remember that at the top left, you see that bar, that's your health bar, and you got three pluses underneath, which means you have three sets of shields to protect you up there. You can get more of those. And there's the multi-tool. That's the multi-tool we were talking about, right? Now it looks like this is a toxic planet. Planet. Okay, so we're all set. And it gives us information. Whenever you land on a new planet, it does this. It tells you a little bit something about the planet. It gives you the name of the planet and tells you what you're looking at. You can see we've got a couple animals in the distance there. I would love to take a look at them, but I don't have an analysis visor installed, so I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So let's give you a rough idea. Um, the first thing it's telling us we need to, of course, fix this. But the first thing we need to do right now is I'm going to get to a safe spot and... I'll describe some of the things I'm doing real quick before we get started. So now I'm gathering something called ferrite dust. If anyone knows what ferrite is, it's kind of an iron. But we need this in order to do some repairs. I want to get those things repaired. I want to get to a safe place so I can get to more describing everything that we need to do. So bear with me just a moment. And from plants, obviously plants have carbon in them. So we're going to gather carbon because we're going to need that later too. I'll describe the other things you're looking at. Don't worry. There's my jetpack. What I'm looking for is just a little safe spot we can tuck her away in. Preferably, I'm going to find, and that's condensed carbon, and I'll explain that in a little bit here too. I'm not going to play very long here, folks, so just bear with me. And that looks like might be a safe spot. Okay, good. I think I found something. I just need this because we're going to recharge some stuff here in a little bit, and I'll explain some of the properties of these things. But you see, I'm going to a cave. Right here. Good. Oops. This is a hazardous plant. They can hurt you if you get too close to it, but it contains an item called sodium. And I'll explain that in a little bit, too. And cobalt, you can get from certain things in here. Now let's get a little further into the cave here. Okay. All right, so look at our bottom left. Bottom left contains our heart meter. That tells us how much oxygen we have in our suit and how much life we've got left in it. Once that gets down to the zero, that's when our health meter will start to drop. Those pluses that we described before and that meter at the top left, it starts taking damage. And when it hits zero, you start losing the pluses in three increments, and then you're dead. Okay, so what else do we have? So there's the health meter I just talked about. The second meter that you saw above that, let me exit the cave and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, that is your toxicity meter. Now, different planets can have different symbols. You can have, be on a fiery planet and it'll show a heat symbol. It'll be on an icy planet, you'll show an ice symbol. Here we've got toxic or poison, if you will. There are also radiation planets you can go to as well that can give you another meter. And it's telling us now with the little arrow that it's dropping at the moment. And the longer we stay out here, the worse it can get. What's the toxicity level? Well, if you look at the bottom left, it says it's 65.5 toxicity. That's really bad. Uh, we want that around 5 or less. So it's really high. Radiation on this planet is up there, but it's only 1.6, so it's not terrible. But you're in a spacesuit, so you're protected from that. As long as it doesn't get up to about 5, 6, 7, 10, something like that, then you're going to start get, taking damage from that, too. And then your temperature tells you it's 92, in my case I have it set to Fahrenheit, 92.8 degrees Fahrenheit, it's pretty warm, um, and you're in a stinky base suit that's going to be sweaty soon, but we're not worried about that. However, if I go into this cave here, I'm protected from those elements. You notice the temperatures even drop down about 10 degrees. Sometimes some caves will drop it down even further. Now, if you're on an icy planet, it also protects you, because even in the real world here on Earth, if you go into a cave, you can find in many locations that caves stay at a consistent temperature year-round, regardless of the temperature outside. So they kind of took that into consideration when they designed this. Pretty smart. Okay, so that's the, the first couple of things you want to look at here. The next thing is our mining beam. As you can see at the top right, it tells us our mining beam is at 25. And if I press and hold the mining beam down for lengths of period of time, you see that bar that's generating? That is your heat register. It's telling you that it's starting to get hot. 
Now the good news is the hotter it gets, the faster you can see that I'm pulling in these elements quicker, but I have a chance of overheating. So what happens if I overheat? Let me show you. See the heat warning? Watch what happens. Overheat. And it just shuts down. You have to wait for it to cool down before you can use it again. But you notice that my mining beam is now down to 13. It can have a maximum of 100. How do you recharge that? Well, to recharge things on your keyboard, you're going to hit the X key, which brings up this lower menu. It goes away after a few seconds if you don't make a choice. It also gives you other options. You'll see that it gives the recharge equipment. Hold on a second. So, gives you the recharge equipment, summon vehicles, creatures, and utilities. We'll get to each one of these in just a second. I'm going to start all the way on the right. This is photo mode. What does that do? Well, if you do photo mode, it does a screenshot. And you can adjust things. You can pull back. You can zoom in. You can go different places. You can go up, down, any way you want to go. And you can then take a picture of your character just by pressing the left mouse key, as it says. But what is that on the bottom left of the screen, those symbols? That is a location address for the planet and system that you're in. You'll notice it consists of 12 symbols. Keep that in mind because you will need to use those one day. But you don't have to worry about memorizing the one that you're at. It's just something that you'll be using down it later in the game. So that's a pretty neat thing to have. Right click to exit your photo mode. Let's go back to that menu and again we're going to navigate. Now you notice it says use the Q and E buttons to navigate around. Your second one is your gestures. Yes, you've got gestures just like in a, other, a bunch of other games. Same thing, Q and E to navigate, and if I click on it, yep, I can wave, point, thumbs up, yep, Fonzie there. No, I need help. I need resources. You're really bored. You can just sit down for a little bit, right? Immediately you'll move and you'll jump back up. So there's a lot of different symbols you can get. You can get more gestures in the future from other different types of quests and stuff like that. So remember I mentioned our mining beam was down to 13%. So our hazard protection's at 100 because nothing's happening. Life support's at 93. It's grayed out because I have nothing in my inventory that will allow me to charge my life support. We'll show you about that later. And then your mining beam's at 13%. How do we charge the mining beam? Well, if we select it with my left mouse button, it gives us options of using phosphorus, which I don't have any. I can use the condensed carbon. That was those big red crystals you saw out there. And carbon. But look closely at these. Are you familiar with that periodic table of elements we were talking about? That's your periodic table letter designation for carbon, which is C. Your condensed carbon, it just gives a C plus. It's kind of invented. Phosphorus is a P. Let's use condensed carbon. You'll notice I'm at 100% now. Very good. So that's how you recharge things. You're going to go to that particular thing. You're going to select it. You choose your item you want to recharge by hitting the left and right. That is the Q and E to navigate. And again, hit the left clicker. And it will tell you what you can use to recharge. You notice again. You have dioxide, but it mentions it as being CO2. Does that sound familiar to you? Carbon dioxide, anybody? They just renamed it di dioxide for this for this game itself. You do have the ability to use life support gels, which are modules that you can build. And then you also can just use plain ordinary oxygen, which is another element you can find on the planet. Okay, we're going to drop back two levels. This is your summon vehicles. You can summon your starship. Your exocraft, we'll get into that later. Your freighter, again, nothing we're going to talk about right now. Or you can select another ship you you've acquired, which could be any number of ships. Now, I'm trying to select it, but of course I don't have any other ships, so there's nothing to select. But you can have up to, I believe it was nine ships, I believe, in your inventory. So, and you can trade and sell ships and get rid of them. And I can summon my ship here, but if I try to, it can't launch because it's damaged. So that's part of the quest line that you find your ship and fix it before you can leave the planet. Let's drop back. So that summons vehicles, as we said. Some of those vehicles that you can summon, by the way, we don't have present here. One of them is your trade rocket. It allows you to trade with a space station. Again, we'll get into that later. 
creatures. You can have companion creatures that you can have in your inventory. You can build things called creature pellets to feed animals on planets. And you can also have the ability to point to your creature and tell them to heal or get over here so you can get them closer to you because they do run away on occasion. If you go to your companion register, it tells you what animals you have and you can have up to, you guessed it, 18 animals, folks. You start out with two. Two spots open. For any spot you want to get uh, open up, it's going to require nanites. Now, it says they're 500 each, but that's not true. Once you get this one and open it for 500, the next one goes up to 1,000, and then etc. It keeps going up. Just keep that in mind. Okay, let's look at the menu one more time here. So there's your creatures, and then we go to utilities. And utilities allow us to swap our multi-tools around from the one we're carrying. You can use your center mouse wheel, by the way, to scroll through the different selections other than using Q and E if you want. You can change to a secondary weapon. You can use your torch. Torch is a flashlight that's built into your suit itself. You can also toggle your camera view, first person, third person again. Problem with that is it's really kind of gimpy to get in and out of there. But did you notice something that it tells you? It has something called quick bind, doesn't it? The bottom right. Let's show you how that works. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to toggle the camera view and I'm going to hold my left control button, not the right one, the left one, and choose a number. In this case, I choose 9. If I hit 9, anytime you want. What do you need, huh? When I'm running on a planet, I would prefer the third person view like this. Okay, let's finish this out. Lastly is a Byte Beat library. It allows you to acquire music that you can drop in here, custom tracks, you can make your own playlists, and you can get your own equipment to actually play music, believe it or not, on bases and stuff like that. I've never actually done this before. It's never actually been an interest of mine. I might get into it one day, but I know some other people have messed around with this. Um, feel free to look on YouTube for other players that have done this, but I've never done it. So I can't tell you a whole lot about that. Um, there's really not much left in here except for the toggle of the uh, flashlight, which you don't have to do there. You have it. It should be on your T button on your keyboard to allow you to turn on your flashlight. Now there's a setting in the menu that allows you to auto turn it on, so when it gets dark outside at night, it'll automatically turn on the flashlight so you can see in front of you. I choose to toggle it myself because I don't like to have that type of access. Now, we're kind of coming to the end of our video here, so I'm going to finish this up real quick here. Uh, next time we do a video, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to get into the pause menu, and we're going to describe, describe all the issues, uh, issues, pardon me, all the different categories up here, and we're going to start with your options and how you can set things up. But now you have a basic understanding of how things work in the game and how you can get the game started, what those different scenarios mean. Um, now I'm going to be gone for just a few days here. I've got a little bit of a vacation I'll be going on, but I'll be back again next week. I'll get a couple more recordings in by next weekend, and uh, we'll continue on with this basic, basic understanding of No Man's Sky gameplay. Um, trying to make it as basic as possible. In the past, when I was growing up, when you opened up, when you got a brand new game from the store and you opened it up, not, those games usually came with a fold-out thing that described the HUD view that you were looking at. No Man's Sky doesn't have that. So a lot of players have done something similar to this. I thought I'd do it myself and give you the option of listening to mine, and hopefully uh, you find this very understanding uh, and informative to playing the game. Um, We'll, next week, uh, we'll start by fixing my scanner. We'll go into that menu and take a closer look around, and then I'll show you some of the aspects of the gameplay. So as you can see, it's getting to nightfall outside, so I think this is a good time to wave goodbye. Shall we? And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again on the next video.